Good morning and welcome to St. Matthew's Church this morning. What a blessing to all be together today. We have been working for uh, quite a while now as a mission outreach board for the new Mission Outreach Sunday coming up August 14th. And we're gonna have one worship service at 10 o'clock and we will be excited to all be together. We want that. And then following the service, the Mission Outreach Board has been creating wonderful opportunities for you to engage in and being able to fellowship with each other and get to know the people within this church as well as meeting needs of needy people. And so here I am in the Vine Cafe and this is where one place is gonna be where you get to come in and have lunch and Jack will be fixing the lunch for us. Another station right behind me here in the gym is going to be Operation Ukraine and we are going to be bagging and boxing food for the war-torn nation, for these people in Ukraine that are in so much need. That Sunday, we'll also have brand new school supplies, school supplies that you've donated, and it's not too late to bring some in now for Project Compassion. So there'll be a table with school supplies and backpacks to be packed. Another station that we'll have will be in the library. We'll have note cards and stationery so that we can write letters of thanks to our first responders as well as military servicemen and women. In the foyer, we are going to have the opportunity to pray, pray, pray. And what a, a need that is around the world. There's so many hurting people. And our desire is to lift them up to the Lord and pray for them and experience, feel what they're feeling. And step into their situations and so we're going to have a few easels set up around the foyer and you will be able to see some history behind each of those what's going on in uh, Guatemala in Paraguay in Good News Club and in some of the ministries that we've already been working on as well as some as some new ones and so you can go around and see what each of those easels are but then also sign up for uh, something that you would like to attend or go to in there. In the center of the foyer, we're gonna have a prayer card station and you can take home prayer cards of what you would like to commit to being a prayer partner. And that would be an awesome way to step into these ministries. I know some of you have said, I wanna be a part of it, but all I can do is pray. Well, that is huge and we need prayer partners. And we'll also be able to pray for each other that day. Yes, the sanctuary uh, will have members of the prayer team ready to pray with anyone that would like to pray um, during the whole event. Um, and lastly, we'll also have um, yearbook photos being taken for the new St. Matthew annual yearbook. So be sure to get like a 30 second snap of yourself or your family before you leave uh, church that day. We are so excited, as you can tell, about this ministry and this uh, Mission Outreach Sunday. Invite your friends and come back. If you've been home, you know, watching online, please come back and join in because there's so many great ways on this particular Sunday to fellowship and reunite, re-get to know your friends here at St. Matthew and meet some new friends while you are being able to participate in helping people around the world, and that's awesome. So now, with joyful noise, we come into worship together to the best part of our week. Good morning, everyone. And you've heard, you heard Gina. You're going to have to make a joyful noise today. We're going to worship the Lord in a few minutes. And um, we continue, the pastor continues the series on lyrics for life. And our hymn this week is Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing, a great hymn. I want you to pay attention to the words. Think about what you're singing about. Very powerful. In Ephesians 1, 3, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with all spiritual blessings. Come thou fount of every blessing. We stand and let's lift it to the Lord.
Jean is coming to lead us. And as always, the altar is open. If you want to come and kneel and pray, we'd love to, to, we'd love to pray with you. Someone from our prayer team will pray with you if you'd like that as well. And uh, as we pray today, let's remember the victims of the flood in Kentucky. That's a devastating thing to that small community. So let's remember to pray for them. And as always, let's remember the persecuted Christians that are around the world and suffering for the cause of Christ. Let's remember to pray for them. Will you worship with me? Jesus, Jesus, Lord, to me. Let's sing together. Jesus. in prayer. Jesus. Oh, to be able to say that name, Jesus. Oh, we love you so much. There is something about your name, the name above all names, that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that you are Lord. Jesus, thank you. Thank you that we can come to you. Thank you that you've made a way so that we can come to you. That you can save us from our sins, from ourself. Thank you, Jesus, for making a way when there didn't seem to be a way. But God, you are the way maker. Oh, we're so grateful. God, we have so many hurts and needs in this world and so many people out there in persecution and missionaries that need you. Oh, Lord, we pray for our missionaries. Lord Jesus, be with them, comfort them, guide them, and protect them. Lord, there's so many travesties happening in the world from starvation and hurting to floods. And then down in Kentucky, we pray for that area. 
God, we pray for the people that are hurting because of natural disasters. Raise up Christians around them to show them your light and your love. And God, may we be that for the people around us. May we be that light that you called us to be. We want to step into who you have called us to be, Lord, and that's to glorify you all the time. Help us to do that, Jesus. We need you, that we can trust in you and lean not on our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge you and you will direct our paths. God, we need that. Please help us to yield our hearts to you to those in this congregation who are suffering and hurting, those watching online that are in their houses right now. Comfort them, step into the center of what they're going through. Reveal yourself to each one of us, Lord Jesus, that we may serve you and glorify you and lift your name high. Oh, that name, Jesus. Thank you so much for being our Lord and Savior. And if there's somebody here that doesn't know you, Lord Jesus, draw them close to you. Let them hear you. Let them open their hearts up today, that today they will hear that you are the only one that saves and that they will invite you in. Let us all grow into the people you want us to be today. In Jesus' precious, holy name, amen. Let's continue to worship Jesus as our living hope. Let's stand and praise him together.
You may be seated. Well, brothers and sisters in Christ, we have a joy today to celebrate the sacrament of holy baptism. And basically at a baptism, there are a couple of things that happen. On the one hand, it's a chance for us to say, Lord, we want you to be the center of my life. I want you, God, to, you have saved me, you've delivered me, and I want to recognize that, and I want to be baptized as a follower of Jesus. And that's on the one hand. On the other hand, it's, it's God's chance to say to us, you are my child. I love you. I want to live at the center of your life. I want to place my mark upon you. And I want to give you strength to live day by day. And baptism is such a beautiful symbol because in the waters of baptism, we are completely immersed. And that represents our lives now being completely immersed in the love of God and the grace of God and under His authority. It also represents a level of dying, right? Like being buried. But when we come back up out of the water, we're reminded that there is new life. And that new life is now ours in Jesus Christ. And Mary Helen Phillips and Cassie Mateka are here to be baptized today. So if you just stand where you're seated right there, I just have a couple of questions to ask. The first question is this, is it both of your desires to move away from a life of sin and move toward God with His grace? If so, say it is. God wants to give you power to live life day by day. To, to live for Him, to resist evil and oppression and injustice in whatever form it would present itself. If you would receive that power, say, I do. I do. And do you put your whole trust in Jesus Christ for your own salvation, wholly relying on Him for the strength to live life for Him? If so, say, I do. Yeah. That is such a gift. And God has brought you, I know both of your stories, and I know that He's brought you to this point, and you want to be obedient to the call that He's placed on you to be baptized as a follower of Him. So Mary Helen, why don't you come down first? I know that um, Mary Helen and I had a chance to talk, and she was just saying how she felt this call by God to, to just follow in this way. And, uh, and so, Mary Helen, it is our joy. When we baptize you, we baptize in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And to baptize in the name of is to be baptized in the essence of. So it's really the name of the Father is the one who loves you. The name of the Son, the, His essence, He was the one that died for you in your place. And the name of the Holy Spirit is the essence of the Holy Spirit is that He lives with you, in you, giving you power to live for Him. So Mary Ellen, we baptize you in the name of the Father who loves you more than you'll ever know, in the name of the Son who chose to die for you, and in the name of the Holy Spirit who will walk every step of life with you. Died to self, raised in Christ. <laughs> We're going to pray for uh, Mary Helen here, and, and Lord, even as we do so, uh, we pray that this baptism, this moment, stays with her, that it inundates mm. her soul and it refreshes her day by day. Every day that, that she steps into the shower, I hope that she's reminded of the waters of this, <laughs> of this day, of your baptism, yes. because it's a continual washing in yes. your spirit. Uh, Lord, we thank you for that, and we thank you for this, this mark upon her life, and we thank you for her sweet and gentle spirit, the way that you have made her uniquely, yes. uh, not only for your church, but for this church here at St. Matthew. Lord, we pray that you'd continue to pour out your spirit on her each and every day. And we pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, thank thank you Lord. Thank you, thank you Father thank God. You. Thank you so much. Thank All right, Cassie. Yeah, would you welcome your new sister in the family? All right, Cassie, come on down. Now, Cassie here, 
she gave her life to Christ at a Carmen concert. Is that right? Yes. I love yes. that. There was an altar call presented and you went forward and you knew that you were answering the call that God had on your life. Yes. And now you want to be fully obedient to that call and seal the deal by being baptized, right? Yes. All right. Well, Cassie, our sister, we baptize you in the name of the Father who loves you more than you'll ever know, in the name of the Son who chose to die for you, and in the name of the Holy Spirit who will walk every step of your life with you. Dead to self, alive in Christ. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> Let's pray for Cassie. Lord, we give you thanks today. Thank you for the, the young faith that is before us. And it's mm. a faith that's only going to grow. Yes. And Lord, we pray that each and every day you would become more and more in Cassie's life. You would grow bigger yes. in her heart and her spirit that, that more and more of Cassie is disappearing, but more and more of Jesus is becoming more apparent yes. in her life. And we pray that you would raise her up to be a strong witness at school Mm. Uh, that she would be a strong witness here at the church and mm. youth group. And Lord, to those around who see her, to see something in her that is just beautiful, something that they want and crave within the, the deepest recesses of their soul. So we pray, Lord, that you would continue to wash Cassie each and every moment of each mm. and every day. Fill her again with your spirit. Yes. And we give you thanks for all these things, your promises, in yes. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. sense it is. It's about an individual decision. You have to have an individual relationship with Jesus. Can't ride on somebody else's coattails. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter how faithful your parents or grandparents were. It's about you having an individual relationship. They have made the decision that they are going to have that sort of relationship with Jesus. But the other part of this is a community decision. And what I want to know from all, from all of you is will you first remember your own baptisms? That own, your own relationship that you have with Jesus? And do you reaffirm your commitment to sin and your desire to submit to the Lordship of Jesus in your own life? And if so, I would invite you to say, we do. We do. That's a good answer. There's one other question I would ask. These two new sisters who are a part of your body now, who are part of this community, part of your family, will you support them? Will you help them to grow? Will you encourage them day by day so that by everything that God has given you, you can support them in everything that God has given them. And if you would do that, say, we do. We do. We do. All right. That's awesome. Well, Lord, thank you for the way in which you have worked today, not only in individual lives, but corporately in the life of St. Matthew. We thank you for your spirit, which sends us day by day out into the world to be witnesses. And we pray that you would continue to be with us in this time of worship. Lord, refresh our souls, each and every one of us, so that we can draw closer to Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to invite you to engage in this next song we're going to do. This was kind of a last minute deal, and we practiced it two times this morning. So. You know, anyhow, it's not about that. I think you're going to like it. Uh, you, you'll get it right away. So I want you to stand and let's worship the Lord together. One, two.
our kindergarten through sixth graders to join me in the back as we head upstairs for kids worship. And good morning. Good morning. It's time for the offering. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise and a smile. You know, in this worship we've had today, it's just, I'm, I'm ready to cheer for anything. And it's a good time to cheer because it's time for us to do a great thing. And in God's economy, you know, there's a time in the Bible, if you haven't read this in Malachi, I know some of you have that memorized. But in Malachi, there's a question, and questions are always dangerous. Will a man rob God? Well, not that I know of. I don't think I do. And see, God's economy is, is like this, is that he gives it to you and he asks for some back. You know, when you've got a, a little bitty kid, if you give him, you know, two cookies and say, I'm going to give you two cookies, would you give one back? Well, if they're young enough, they might. <laughs> but they'll cry if you eat it. And a little later, it's like, here's some cookies. Would you give Grandpa one back? <laughs> that kid's gone. <laughs> and that's somehow I think we, we feel like that at, at offering time. And it's just part of original sin, part of who we are, part of that sort of thing. But uh, I'm in a privileged place where I get to, to see a lot of what comes in and goes out. And we have people who worship and haven't been able to be here probably two years. This thing's gone on forever. And they faithfully give. And we have a lot of ways that you can give. We've had people come by and say, listen, I'm going to come by. If I come by, can you come out to the car and get my offering? And you go, well, that's a lot of work. Thank you. You know, because people worship with us, not just here in the building, but they worship with us uh, over the, you know, the airwaves and, and other things like that. And they're so faithful. And you're so faithful. And things are, things are good, but things are expensive. We got a $7,000 air conditioner bill coming. Somehow the people in the kitchen want air conditioning. If I cooked, maybe I'd understand that, right? And we've had some leaks and we're gonna have to replace some carpet and we're gonna have to do some things. And, and it's a little lean, it's, it's August every year in the summer, we get a little bit behind and we have some reserves. But the question is, has God given you cookies and asked for one back? It's happened to me. I've done that. And it's our opportunity to say, Lord, that's your economy. That's what you asked for. And that's who I am. And that's what I'll take care of for you. So I don't know if you're listening today, there's ways that you can give, but there's many ways you can give. And, and if you call me, I'll come out the car and get it. <laughs> and to do that, let's just be faithful to God as many of you always are. Lord, we thank you for these people. They've been so faithful. And, and there are moments where we get behind. There are moments when we forget. There are moments we go out of town. There are all kinds of moments. And Lord, may we do what we can because you've supplied for us and we're giving this in faith, really truly believing that the God who's given us what we have now will continue to give in his faithful way. You're a good God. Thank you for what you're doing for us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Has that been your prayer? Give me Jesus. That's, those are great words to have on your mind. Um, uh, if you did not make it here early enough to hear the announcements, uh, there's one part of it that we, we're having a great one service thing coming up August uh, 14th. And um, we're gonna have opportunities to put our faith into action. Um, five different opportunities, in fact. And one of them is stuffing backpacks to give to ki- uh, kids, local kids through Project Compassion. And if you would like to participate, help us prepare for that Sunday, out on the Welcome Center, there's a, a, a requested items list. And on there, you can see the kinds of things that we're hoping to get uh, to put in those backpacks. So if you'd like to bring those in, there's a box out in the foyer that you can do that for. Let's pray. Lord, as we come to your word, we always remember that your word is life. Lord, where else would we go? to hear words of life. The culture certainly doesn't have them. The world doesn't have them. The the people who are wise of the world do not have them. Only you, God, have words of life. And we are desperately in need of wisdom. So would you speak to our hearts today? Would you knock loose some of the things that need to be knocked loose in us? And would you help us connect the dots through the presence of your Holy Spirit that we might have a deeper understanding of who you are and who you're calling us to be as followers of Jesus? We love you, Lord, and we ask for this time to be anointed in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're wrapping up our series um, on lyrics for life. Uh, I hope that you've enjoyed getting to know some of these hymns and songs of the church. Um, You know, after all, these hymns, these lyrics, they can bring life. As this is why John Wesley said, learn these songs of the hymnal before you learn any other songs, because he knew that when we write these words to our hearts, they're gonna bring life and they're gonna bring encouragement. When when the, the skies are gray and you're not sure what tomorrow's gonna hold, you start pulling out all these words and they encourage you and they strengthen you and they remind you of the good God that we have and all that he has done. So um, today we're gonna wrap up with a hymn, one of my favorites, in fact, called Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Uh, How many of you grew up knowing this hymn? Raise your hand if you knew this hymn. Okay, good. Several of you knew this hymn. Um, It was written by a guy named Robert Robinson, whose story is kind of a fascinating one. Uh, His dates are 1735 to 1790. um, And when he was eight years old, Robert's dad died. Now, maybe some of you know what it's like to lose a father at a young age. It's tough. Because a young man at eight years old has to find his way in life and doesn't have that father figure speaking into his life. When he was 14 years old, his mother sent him to London to be an apprentice to a barber. And looking at that hairstyle, maybe that had something to do with it, I don't know. But he, so he apprentices as a barber in London. And when he got there, uh, as as a teenager, he fell into a gang of young men. And they got into mischief. They did all the things that they shouldn't be doing. And Robert Robinson found probably in that gang a, a love that he missed from his father. But they got into all sorts of trouble, and one day they learned that George Whitfield was gonna be preaching in London. Now, this is like Target, right? A preacher coming to speak in the open air for young hoodlums. It's like, hey, let's go. We're gonna heckle this guy. 
And that's what it was. Robert, Robert Robinson got his buddies and he said, hey, let's go and we'll heckle this Whitfield guy. Well, if you don't know anything about George Whitfield, he was a fiery and incredibly effective preacher. So they go to listen to Whitfield preach and he's preaching on Matthew 3, 7. Who you brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Yeah, that'll preach all day long, right? (laughs) And somehow, in the middle of that sermon, Robert Robinson fell under conviction. And he realized that the way I've been living, it's not the right way to live. Maybe there is this thing called God. Maybe maybe this God, I I, I need to live for him. And, And he wrestled with this in an ongoing way. Well, at the age of 20, he gave his heart to Christ. And God kept working on Robert Robinson. And finally, Robert Robinson answered the call to ministry. And he was preaching. He settled in in a, it was called Stoneyard Baptist Church. That's where he spent most of his time. And Pentecost Sunday was rolling around. And he decided he wanted to write a hymn for Pentecost Sunday. And so he penned the words of come thou fount of every blessing. So what do we learn from this hymn? Well, the first thing that we learn is that we were made to praise God. Did you know that? You want to know what's your purpose here on earth? Why are you here? Are you some random act of of genetic material? Not at all. Not at all. You have a purpose for why you're here. And your purpose is to praise God. Because he's the one who gave you life. Now we'll see it in in the lyrics of the hymn. But let's also look at Psalm 150. If you've ever wondered if we were made to praise God, let's just take a look at Psalm 150. And in fact, here's what I want us to do. I'd like us to read this together. And there are only six verses. So what we need to do as we're reading these six verses is that very gently, we're going to need to intensify the, the strength with which we are reading. Are you with me? All right, let's read it together. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and lyre. Praise him with timbrel and dancing. Praise him with the strings and pipe. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Your intensity was a little weak, but you got the idea, right? This sense in which we were created to praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath. Do you have breath in you this morning? You betcha. So praise the Lord. How many times have you taken a breath today since you woke up this morning? You have no idea unless you do the math. You can, you can average out breaths per minute and do the math. You have no idea unless you do that. Every single one of them is given to you by God. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Do you know, in Hebrew, the word for praise is halel. And that word, hallelujah, means praise Yah, praise Yahweh, praise God. That's what hallelujah means. And hallel, in one form or another, appears 13 times in six verses. Do you think that praising God is an important part of living? Oh my goodness. So let me ask you this question. Where in your life is the praising of God evidenced? Where do you find yourself praising God? Is it in church on Sunday morning? I hope so. But what about on Monday morning when you're going into work? 
What about Friday when the hours seem to be lingering before the weekend? What about when you have to grab the lawnmower and go mow the grass? What about when you have to go get the oil changed in your car? What about when you're changing the oil? What about when you have to vacuum the living room? What about when you have to clean up the garage? What about then? Are you praising God in that? Because we can. We were made to praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you. (laughs) If praising the Lord is not a regular part of your day, can you make A, a commitment to grow in that area, and B, can you ask the Lord to help you? Because he wants to, he will. He will help you. You know what, I gotta tell you, my first reaction is not, praise God, I'm in a traffic jam. I'll be honest, it's not. It's not my first reaction. I have a different first reaction. But the Lord is teaching me how to praise him in the traffic jam. And he will teach you. He'll teach us. Secondly, we learn that praise is inspired by awe. I've said before, because I've heard it from my father-in-law countless times, without awe, there is no worship. And I fully believe what he's saying. I understand what he's saying. Unless we have this sense of, oh my goodness, I'm in the presence of the living God. This sense of awe of all that he has done on our behalf. This sense of his magnanimity, his his incredible majesty, his glory. Unless that blows us away. Have we really encountered worship? It's an interesting question. But look at again at the first stanza or first verse of Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God where? In his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. All right. So to me, the image is like Isaiah chapter 6. Do you remember that? Where in the year that King Uzziah died. I saw the Lord high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Do you think Isaiah is experiencing a little awe? He's overwhelmed. Can you imagine if you saw white linen, the hem of the robe that just consumed this entire space? And Isaiah is blown away. This is God's sanctuary. He says, praise him in in his mighty heavens. What do God's mighty heavens look like? I don't know. But wherever God is, that's where heaven is. And in God's presence, there is Jesus and the Spirit and the angels and things that you and I have not even begun to conceive. Praise Him in His heavens. In other words, be blown away by a sense of awe. If you're trying to praise the Lord, we've got to have in our hearts a sense of awe and wonder. And I think Robert Robinson captured it well in that first stanza. Come, thou fount of every blessing. In other words, God is like this fountain that never, never runs dry. Every blessing of God is contained. Come, thou fount of every blessing. Tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy that are never ceasing call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet sung by flaming tongues above. Catch the allusion to Pentecost? The flaming tongues above each person. Praise the mount. I'm fixed upon it. I'm fixed on that mount of redeeming love. Robinson, again, wrote that for Pentecost. But his opening line is profound, inviting the Spirit of God, the fount of every blessing. Do you remember Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3? 
Praise be to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every, everyone say every, with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Every spiritual blessing in Christ has been given to you. You possess it already. Great days. And he recognizes that our hearts, even though this is true, that God has already given us every spiritual blessing that we need, even though that's true, we have to have our hearts tuned to sing his praise, right? Um, I thought I'd give you just a little demonstration of this because this is, is actually quite um, appropriate, I think. Um, oh, pull that down just a sec. There we go. All right, so if we were gonna sing Come Thou Fount. Are you with me? You know what key we're in? Uh, oh, I'll try a different. Yeah, it's not, how many recognize that that's bad? Okay, thank you. Here's the thing. That guitar is grotesquely out of tune. And if, if I was going to play it, I would need a couple of minutes to tighten some of the strings and to loosen other strings in order for it to be tuned. Tension is important when tuning. And I'm curious this morning, when life strums you, when stress strums you, what comes out of your strings? Are you tuned for praise when stress happens and when life happens? Or are you tuned for criticism and bitterness and gossip? Because life has a way of strumming all of us. And we all need tuning. Our hearts need tuning so that we can praise Him. And the, God, the good news is that God is a great tuner of hearts. And He loves to tune our hearts when we give ourselves over to him. Sometimes, some of us go through life and we hang on to things that we don't want to let go of. And we wonder why our hearts are not tuned. And it's because we're hanging on to something we shouldn't be hanging on to. But God has enough grace to help us let go of the things that we need to let go of so that he can tune our hearts to sing his praise. It begins when we're overwhelmed by a sense of awe of who God is. Third, praise of God is fueled when we remember what God has done. We've talked about this before, I realize, but it's such a key point. One of the ways that we help God tune our hearts is by remembering all the good things that God has done. We see it in the second verse of Psalm 150. Praise Him for His acts of power, His mighty works in the NLT. Praise Him for His surpassing greatness, Psalm 150 says, or in the NLT, his unequaled greatness. Praise him for that. You know, for the Israelites, every time they encountered Psalm 150 and they heard those words, praise him for his acts of power, praise him for his, his greatness, his unsurpassed greatness, the Israelites would remember the 10 plagues that God sent to Pharaoh's way. They would remember how God delivered the Israelites by parting the sea and how he destroyed Pharaoh's army by bringing the sea on top of them. They would remember how God provided water in the desert 
and all the victories that God gave Israel over their enemies, they would recall all those things as they remembered his mighty acts of power. And that's important for all of us. Robinson captured it well. Here I raise my Ebenezer, hither. We don't use hither a lot. <laughs> except in our house, every once in a while, we mix German and Old English, and we say, kommen Sie hither, <laughs> right? It means here, come here. Here I raise my Ebenezer. I've, I've gotten to this place where I am by God's help. Hither by thy help I've come. And I hope by your good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger, I remember. I remember, Jesus sought me when a stranger. For Robinson, I remember the day I, was go I went to heckle George Whitfield, but instead I felt my heart warmed. I remember that. Wandering from the fold of God, he to rescue me from danger interposed his precious blood. I'm gonna remember how Jesus interposed his precious blood. By the way, one of our daughters, after singing this hymn, I think it was this hymn, she leaned over to Gina and said, I think I need a thesaurus. You know, like some of the, I just don't get some of these words, right? Um, when Jesus interposed his precious blood, if I saw a three-year-old walking toward those stairs, I would interpose myself. I would get in between that child and these stairs. I have placed myself between the child and the danger. And this is what Jesus did, didn't he? He interposed his precious blood. He saw us headed for danger and he interposed his blood, the cleansing blood of Jesus so that we could be saved and not be in danger. That's what that means. Here I raise my Ebenezer. Now, I gotta tell you, out of all, you know, every once in a while you'll find people that'll take up the argument, the, the, the um, worship wars argument again, you know, well, traditional worship is best or, you know, contemporary worship is best and they kind of get into this. And many times they'll lift up this hymn and they'll say, but hymns, they use words that we don't even know, like Ebenezer, you know, and, and uh, People, I mean, when you hear that word, some people aren't sure if they should even have an Ebenezer in church, let alone if they should raise it, <laughs> right? Like, I don't even know what that is. Well, here's where Ebenezer comes from. It comes from 1 Samuel chapter 7, verse 12. Now, get this. Okay, so um, after seeing God defeat the Philistines, it says that Samuel, quote, took a stone and set it up between Mitzpah and Shen, or Yeshana in some translations. And he named that stone Ebenezer, saying, thus far the Lord has helped us. You know what's interesting about that story? Is that twice before, at this place, in this, in this very place, the Israelites had been defeated by the Philistines. But this time, God was faithful, and Samuel erected a stone. Sometimes you'll see one big stone, sometimes maybe a stack of stones, but it's placed there so that you will always remember every time you pass by God's goodness. When you look back over your years, years of life, do you have Ebenezer's constructed? Places where you had to put a stone to say, I remember that God stepped in in that part of my life. Look back over your life. See where those Ebenezers are. And then, it's not just once that we do this. Praising God is a lifestyle that focuses on the Lord more than his gifts. We all know that the giver is always greater than the gifts, do we not? The, say that with me. The giver is always greater than the gifts. One more time. The giver is always greater than the gifts. Sometimes we forget. Sometimes we think it's the gifts that are better, right, than the giver. But it's never true. 
the giver, the presence of God with you in what you're going through right now is far more important than any gift that he could ever give you. Maybe save Jesus. I mean, but Jesus is the gift, right? God is the gift. In Psalm 150, this almost goes by unnoticed. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and lyre. Praise him with the timbrel, which is a tambourine, and dancing. Praise him with the strings and the pipe. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. What does that have to do with life? Well, there are many different situations in life that are represented by those instruments. That's why. Because those instruments were used for various things, from funerals to weddings, from lamenting to rejoicing to worshiping. In other words, it, all those instruments represent all of life. God is inviting us to praise Him in all of life. Are you praising Him right now? Some of you are grieving, and some of you are hurting. And some of you are lamenting and suffering. Some of you are celebrating the best moments of your life these days. But are you praising him? Praise him. Even if it doesn't make sense, praise him. Robinson captured this well. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor daily I'm constrained to be. How often? Daily. Daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness like a fetter bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wonder. Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart. Take and seal it. Seal it for the courts above. What is, what is he saying that every day God's grace is so much greater, so powerful, so awe-inspiring, so amazing, that I'm constrained to be in debt of God. Did you catch the lyric? Let thy goodness, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart. You know what a fetter is? A fetter is like shackles for your feet. This is what prisoners are put in when they're transferred so that they can't get a full stride and run away. And so Robinson says, maybe even Robinson saw that. Maybe he saw some of his friends get led away in shackles. And instead of that, he says, Lord, let your heart, let your goodness, like like shackles, be on your goodness on one side, my heart on the other. I am shackled to you, God, because of your goodness. You know, God's goodness is like a fetter. And and that's a good thing because, as he says, we're prone to wander. Are we not? Everyone say yes. yes. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Even the Apostle Paul said, I know there's things that I want to do and I don't do them, and there are things that I don't want to do and I do them. I'm prone to wander. Lord, I feel it. DJ caught a video for me. Uh, This kind of sums up for me human experience. Take a look at this. Young shepherd getting out the lamb that's stuck. Come on. It's like Jesus pulling us out. Whoop! Now, isn't that just sum up humanity? (laughs) Jesus pulls us out of the crevice only to set us free, and we're we're, we're beyond joyful for three steps until we're back in the crevice. (laughs) Prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it. Again, autobiographical. There is an apocryphal story about Robert Robinson that we really can't prove or or disprove. But the story is that he was on a train with a young girl and and he was kind of destitute and she reads this poem of Come Thou Found and he said, oh, young lady, I was the one who penned those words and I would give a thousand worlds if I could feel that again. I don't know if that's true or not. 
but I know that we're prone to wander. So, Lord, take my heart and seal it. When I hear that word, I think about letters. You remember, did, some of you probably used wax and a stamp, and that stamp had a picture on it. This one, I think, is a butterfly that you see. And, and many kings would use a signet ring, and a ring had a carving out of it so that when the wax was on the document, they could take that ring, and only the king had that symbol. And it's the same symbol that Robert Robinson says, Lord, here's my heart. You take your signet ring, Lord, and you put that on my heart because I belong to you. Have you made that decision to give the Lord your heart and let him seal it with his Holy Spirit as a deposit of what is to come? You can do that today. Lord, I give you my heart. I know I'm prone to wander, and I know that you've saved me through Christ. You've forgiven my sins through Christ on the cross. It's finished. So I give you my heart. Take and seal it. All of us are going to have our heart sealed by something or someone. We're all going to have our heart sealed by something or someone. Who's it going to be for you? There's no one better to seal your heart than Christ. When, the Lord, when we let the Lord grow us, we stop focusing on what we can get from him, and we start focusing on his beauty, his grace, his love, his presence, the giver himself. And he is far more beautiful than anything that we could get from him. When we fulfill our purpose, we praise the Lord because this is why we were created. Read Psalm 158 or 148 before you go to bed. You know, when the sun shines, it's praising the Lord because it's doing what it was created to do. When the moon gives light in the evening, it's praising the Lord because it was doing what it was created to do. When you and I praise God, we are fulfilling our purpose and glorifying him in everything that we do and say. And then lastly, praising God in the present has a past and a future. I've said this before about joy. It's still true about joy. It's also true about praising. Praising God in the present has a past and a future. All right? Um, and, And Robinson alluded to that. When we remember what God has done in the past, That's a great place to start, to remember God's faithfulness. But there's also a future for that. The fourth stanza was left out of the United Methodist hymnal and many other hymnals, but it was really to the detriment of churches to have his fourth stanza removed because listen to this. Oh, that day, he, it's, it's looking forward to the eschatological reality, the end times when everything is restored and God establishes his kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. He's looking forward to that and he says, oh, that day when freed from sinning, I shall see your lovely face clothed then in blood-washed linen. What a crazy lyric, clothed in blood-washed linen how i will sing your sovereign grace come my lord no longer tarry take my ransom soul away send your angels now to carry me to realms of endless day he's looking forward does that fill your heart with praise when you look forward to what god is going to do in the end do you know that someday we will see him whether we go to be with him because we passed before he came or it's on the day that he comes back for his bride, the church. We will see him. That, when you think of all the goodness of God that he's done in your past and all the goodness that God has in store for those who love him, it fills our hearts with praise. Gracious and loving God, we need you. We love you, we praise you, hallelujah. (laughs) We praise you, Lord. 
And Lord, I pray for everyone here, myself included, God, we need our hearts tuned to sing your praise. And there are times in our lives, Lord, where we go out of tune, but because of your faithfulness to us, even when we are faithless, God, you give us grace to tune our hearts to praise. We know it's not just us, it is you working in us. And so we invite you to do that now. Restore us, renew us, revive us. Help us to keep our eyes fixed on you, the author and finisher of our faith. You gave us this faith that we enjoy. It's not even ours to claim. You helped us and we are so grateful so God, we praise you today for all that you are in Jesus' name, amen. One of the ways to tune our heart is to let the Lord know how much we need him. We stand and let's worship together. He is the one defense. He is your righteousness. Not yours, it's His. In you, living in you. How amazing is our God. As you go from this place today, I pray that you go praising. Praise Him in the morning, praise Him at the noontime, praise Him when the sun goes down. Praise Him, amen? amen. Have a great week.